Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. This is Lloyd Bustard and this is the channel where you get your motivation, your inspiration, and your calibration for your destination. I'm too busy, I'm in a hurry, I don't have the time. Three nails in the coffin of happiness and depth of character. Why would I say that? Because a personality of strength and beauty is not developed on the fly. I'm going to give you a takeaway already. Write this down. Implement it in your life. It's simple. Here we go. Throw your mind and nerves in neutral and coast for two minutes. What? That's right. Throw your mind and nerves in neutral and coast for two minutes. Meditate. Relax. Stop thinking about how busy you are, how rushed your life is. Just neutral. Coast for two minutes. If you'll do it, those two minutes will do more for you than a driven mind wasting time and idle dreaming and complaining. I've seen people, and you have too, in great mental stress recover their poise once they learn the sense of organizing their time. They thought they were dying. They thought they had the latest terminal disease when all they needed was released from the tyranny of the clock. Because here's the secret. If you're too busy to read a poem, if you're too busy to kiss your spouse goodbye when you leave for work, if you're too busy to listen to the wisdom of an elder, if you are too busy to listen to the shy confidence of a beautiful little child, then you're missing out on so much of the charm of life. Mm. You're, 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 you're caught up in the rat race, man, and it's killing you. You're just like this. Everything you do is fast. Temple, it's got to be fast or it ain't no good. See, everything you do, that's what I'm saying. These are the kind of people that, that uh, their existence is keyed to a temple. Their existence is keyed to a temple that demands swift evaluation that only the surface uh, of anything is skimmed. Did you hear that? They're keyed to this fast temple of swift evaluation and only the surface of anything is skimmed. In other words, they skim everything off the top. They're going so fast, they've never developed any relationships of depth. They've never developed any depth of character. They've never developed any depth of real happiness, real joy, and real peace, and real family interaction. Why? Because they're just, they're driven. They're driven, man. They're driven. They've got, they got to go fast. They got to go fast. And have you ever noticed when they finally reach their goal and they have the house, the car, and all the money and everything, they look back and say, I'm still not happy. Why? Because you left 
the depth of life behind. And your whole life was just only surface relationships, surface results, surface peace, surface joy. Man, that's heavy. I want you to seriously think about that. These are the people that imagine that their skill set and uh, their perfections and their talents are heightened because they can do things fast. They're speed oriented. But in truth, their sensibilities are dulled by overstimulation. Remorse over wasted time can be acute torture because a sense of inadequacy and fatigue follows the inferiority that grips our soul when we feel like we're losing our struggle with time. The ticking of the clock keeps the impression of failure before us. In fact, I believe that the clock is one of the most prolific sources of inferiority complexes. We have to have a philosophical understanding of time. We have to understand the importance of it and the unimportance of it. And we have to have our emotional response to time straightened out before the mechanics will be enduring. Because simply gaining the upper hand on the clock and the calendar doesn't mean that we disregard time. The person whose philosophy is full and fine is really the master of time because he understands that the mind is the same in any hour in any year and he has an acute awareness of the present. He's more likely to find new opportunities and succeed than the one who wants to drag the past along with him. You know, time and its proper use can do a lot of good for us, right? Well, it can lessen pain for us, right? And uh, it lends itself to our maturing plans. Now, disrespect for time and, and its accumulative power is usually the mark of a shallow thinker. How many people say, you know, what is the use of planting a tree? It takes too long. What's the use of saving money? Uh, it takes too long to get anything together. So in planning nothing and saving nothing, they have allowed uh, the formidable face of time to discourage them. Whereas if they would learn to work with time, they could achieve great results. Uh, with time's persistent help, you don't need to make Herculean efforts. Uh, a little done consistently and persistently will, in the aggregate, uh, make a great total. How much great work has never begun simply because the hurriers think that it takes too long? But they've never stopped to consider the impermanence and the shoddiness of uh, uh, a hurried method. It's never too late to begin again. Time is impersonal. It's the same every moment. And time imposes no limitations upon us. You know, our discouragements are really self-made, but time is the great encourager. So that's why it's important that we learn to love time, respect time, appreciate time, value time, and value, value what time brings to us. And if you'll do that, then you'll be your own master of time in your own soul. Don't punish yourself because your timing of life is different than that of your neighbors. So much of our suffering could be eliminated if we would assert our own divine right to be individuals. I refuse to let the sacredness and the beauty and the value of life be marred through standardization. <laughs>